Hello, it's good to be here again with a new section of our course and uh, there's a puzzle, a math puzzle Jason will paint this dirty wall which is a square the diagonal is 20 feet long can you find the area he will paint? have a look and uh, we will talk about something you probably already know but we will talk today and it, it will help you to solve this uh, puzzle okay think about how to find this area let's move to chapter 7 rational exponents radicals and complex numbers and uh, we will work on section 7.6 radical equations and problem solving objective number one solve equations that contain radical expressions and let's talk first about power rule if both sides of an equation are raised to the same power all solutions of the original equation are among the solutions of the new equation and let's uh, uh, check an example to understand how can we apply this to solve equ uh, rational equations radical equations i mean radical equations <laughs> and this is the first one that you, we will solve check this out square root of x plus one equals five and what you're going to do to solve it we will apply uh, submit both sides to the same power as the index of the of the root and the index is e square is a square root right is two so this is a two because it's square root so we will submit both sides to the power of two what the power rule says is when you find this new equation this is a new equation because you are changing right you are submitting to the the power of two on both sides of the equation the solutions of this new equation uh, might be solutions to the original equation as well and that's uh, what we will find out uh, so after we we do this we can simplify because we can simplify the square root with the the square and let's solve x plus one equals what five squared 25 apply uh, the addition properties of equality because you can subtract one from both sides so now this is going to be a negative one on the other side x equals 25 minus 1 24 this is the answer but uh, remember this is the answer for the new equation that you found by applying the power uh, on both sides of the equation now we have to try check the solution plugging into the original equation let's check and this check is not to see if you did something right uh, wrong this check is to uh, confirm that this solution also applies to the original equation let's check apply x equals 24 24 plus 1 and check if it is equals to 5 okay and this is square root of 25 and is actually equals to 5 that means check it this is the solution we are looking for x equals 24 is a solution for the original equation okay now moving maybe um, yes this step by step to solve is this isolate one radical in one side of the equation raise each side of the equation to the power equal to the index of the root and step three if equation still contains radical you go back and repeat step one and two at the end check the proposed solution and remember this check is not only to see if you did anything uh, wrong is to check if the solution you found applies to the original equation let's check and let's work on another example and now i have a square root of x minus one uh, this minus one equals to zero right step one isolate the radical the radical is uh, is in the same size here with this negative one this negative one is bothering us is a problem so we're going to move to the other side that means apply addition property of equality add one on both sides of the uh, equation so if you add one you eliminate this you add one you uh you it's, it, it's like moving 
the number to the other side with a different sign. This is how it looks like. So we have x minus 1 equals positive 1. Great. Apply the square to both sides because this is square root. So apply square to both sides. And then you're going to have uh, simplify this square with this. The square root of it is the square. x minus 1 equals 1 squared is 1. Now, again, additional property of equality. You're going to add 1 on both sides of the equation. And you have x equals 2. This is what we found. But remember, check. Check your solution. Uh, plug in the number that you just found to into the original equation. 2 minus 1. And check if it is equals to 1. 2 minus 1, 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Yes. We can say yes. That means confirmed x equals 2 is the solution uh, that we are looking for. It solves the original equation. Moving to another example. Now we will solve this equation 2x plus square root of x plus 1 equals to 8. Again, follow the step by step. Isolate the radical. The radical is here, but it's together with this 2x. We don't want this, this 2x uh, uh, in the same size, in the same size I mean, of the equation as the radical. So move this to the other side. You, you're going to do this by applying addition property of equality. Subtract 2x from both sides of the equation and this is the effect now we have only the radical on the left hand side x plus 1 equals 8 minus 2x right great apply the square on both sides and we are applying square because this is a square root and then we can simplify the square root of the square and then we have check here x plus 1 equals 8 minus 2x squared and now how we solve it well you can uh, calculate this 8 minus 2x times 8 minus 2x and apply the distributive property or you can remember the um, special cases, the, the, the perfect squares that we worked on in sections 5.7. And this is a special case when we have, let me show the formula again so you can remember. I'm going to show the formula here, okay? Let me show the formula uh, uh, right here so we can apply, we can remember. This is the formula we are looking for A minus b squared equals a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Okay, this is a formula we studied on section 5.7. Let's apply here because it saves time. So 8 is a, so a squared 64 minus 2 times 8 times 2 uh, so we're going to have 16.32x plus 2x squared for x squared, right? This is um, the equation, the resulting equation. Now we will change and uh, adapt this using additional property of equality and uh, check if we can find an answer, okay? Now let's move both uh, x uh, plus 1 to the other side of the equation because uh, we need to solve, maybe we can factor it out and find a solution. And then we're going to have, uh, let's, let's write down a little bit different. And you can switch sides, okay, you can switch sides for x squared, uh, negative 32x minus x negative 33x 
and uh, 64 minus 1, 63. This equals to 0. Well, you can uh, apply a method to solve this, to factor it out. Uh, we've learned before. I will show here the solution, but we can find uh, the one of the methods is the AC method, right? That you find A times C, 4 times uh, 63, and uh, you have B equals negative 33. You find two numbers that multiplied, they are equals to A times C, and this, the sum of the numbers, uh, the, the, it's equals to negative 33. This is the one way we learn how to solve this kind of uh, equation by factoring it out. We will learn on the other sections another way and another formulas. But right now, let's uh, use this and then we're going to have 3 minus x times 21 minus 4x is how we factor it out. And the answers, the solution, we have two solutions. One is going to be x equals 3 and another one is x equals 21 over 4. Okay, we have these two solutions. Those two solutions are solutions for the, the equation that we created after changing the original one, after applying the power of uh, 2, the, the, the square, on both sides. We have to check to see if those uh, uh, solutions, they apply to the original equation. So it's very important to check and I stress again, it's not only checking if you did something wrong, it's checking if the solutions apply to the original equation. So plug in the original equation was 2, so just to remember, 2x plus x minus plus 1 equals 8. This is the original equation, right? Yes. And now let's uh, try each one, each uh, one of the uh, solutions we got. x equals 3. So plug in here x equals 3. 2 times 3 plus square root of 3 plus 1. And we have to check if this is equals to 8. Okay, we need to check. 2, plus, 2 times 3, 6, plus square root of 4, 6, plus square root of 4, 2, equals to 8. Yes, 8 equals to 8. So that means x equals 3 is good. x equals 3 is a solution. Now uh, let's uh, find out if the other one, x equals 21 over 4, if this is a good solution or not. Check here, plug in. Plugging into the original equation, 2 times 21 over 4 plus the square root of 21 over 4 plus 1, and check if this is equal to 8. Uh, do all the um, simplifications, and at the end, let me just uh, skip a few steps, but remember, we have to just simplify this thing. At the end, you're going to find something like that, 26 over 2 equals to 8, okay? After all the simplifications, you find 26 over 2 equals to 8. What do you think? Is this right or wrong? No, this is wrong. This is not true. That means, no, this solution here, 21 over 4, is not a solution. That's right. x equals 21 over 4, not a solution. The only solution is x equals 3, okay? Very important to check the solutions you, you found. And we, there's a name, there's a special name. 21 over 4 is an extraneous solution. That means it's a, it's a wrong solution. It's not a solution at all. Extraneous means no, it's not a solution at all. The only solution is x equals 3. Now let's work on this example. Solve square root of y plus 5 uh, equals 2 minus the square root of y minus 4. Okay, 
So what you have to do, first step, isolate one of the radicals. And this is already isolated. If you check the left hand side of the equation, we have the radical isolated. So apply, this is the square root. So we apply to both sides of the equation, the square. So you can simplify this square root of the square and then you have y plus 5 equals uh, 2 minus square root of y minus 4 squared right and this uh, we will uh, again use the formula <laughs> and remember the formula the perfect square trinomial is uh, a minus b squared equals to what let's say this is a this is b right it's a squared minus 2 a b plus b squared okay this is the formula the perfect square trinomial we learned on section 5.7 so let's say a squared 4 right minus 2 times 2 4 times the square root of y minus 4 plus b squared is uh, the square root of y minus 4 squared is y minus 4. Nice. Now apply addition property, multiplication property and uh, move everything that's not radical. Check again the procedure. Uh, we, we still have a root and uh, we need to eliminate this other root as well. So you repeat again step one and step two we're going to isolate this root so move everything else to the other side of the equation that means apply additional property of equality okay move and we will have y plus five and let's do this carefully this is additional property is the same thing as subtracting four on both sides of the equation and subtract y on both sides and subtract and add four on both sides okay yes this is equals two and then you're going to keep this negative four square root of y minus four this we keep on the right hand side all right check this out so we can eliminate this and y minus y is zero and the only thing remaining is going to be this this number five so we can write you can switch switch sides right negative four square root of y minus four equals five no problem you can switch sides divide both sides by negative four and then you have the square root of y minus four equals to what negative five over four if you divide both sides by negative four just like that negative four here negative four okay and do the all the calculations uh carefully and uh, it's, it's take your time i'm going sometimes i go a bit faster here but you can take your time do things carefully because now we're gonna apply step two again uh submit power of two apply power of two on both sides of the equation then we have y minus 4 equals, because you can simplify, right? y minus 4 equals, when you square this negative 5 over 4, negative with negative positive, 5 is 25, and 4, 16. Okay? This is the, the result. Now we don't have any radicals. We found a, a solution, and y equals 25 over 16. If you move this negative 4 to the other side, plus 4, and this is equals 89 over 16. Okay, this is interesting. Now we have a solution, but again, we had to work and um, apply the power of uh, the, the, the square on both sides, then apply the square on both sides again. You change the original equation. You have to apply this solution 
into the original equation to make sure the solution is good. So substitute the value we just found, 89 over 16, into the original equation. And the original is, the original equation, just to remember, is y plus 5 equals 2 minus y minus 4. This is the original equation, right? We have to plug in this value we, we found 89 over 16 and uh, yes I know sometimes it's annoying to work with these fractions right and uh, but uh, never mind just write down uh, um, and plug in 80, 89 over 16 into the original equation well you do all the simplifications you you can and uh, you're gonna find something like that 169 I did this before so th that's the reason I'm doing things a bit faster okay but you can do it at your own pace you can work uh, with um, with uh, with time you don't need to rush you can pause the video if you want and work and then you 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 resume you, uh, you you play again the video uh, at the very end after you do all the simplifications you're gonna find probably something like that check it out that's what I found 13 over 4 equals 3 over 4 or 13 13 equals 3 and this is obviously this is not right this is wrong okay that means the solution is, is wrong. We cannot use the solution. And uh, we're going to say that this equation, since we, we found one solution and this solution is not good for the original equation, this equation here has no solution. Okay? No solution. And I want to stress again, we check not, uh, not to, to see if it made any mistake, is to check if the solution, after you change the, the original equation and you apply the power of 2 or the square on both sides again and again, you change the equation and you found the solution for the, the, the new equation. Now we have to plug in into the original one, the original equation of the problem uh, to, to, to check if this is a good solution. And in this case, no, it's not a good solution. Let's work on another example. Now we have a square root of 2x minus 4 minus a square root of 3x plus 4 equals to negative 2. Again, uh, step by step procedure step by step isolate one of the radicals and let's uh, isolate this one on the left hand side of the equation oh, that means we're going to move this other one to the other side when I say move we're not moving we are applying addition property of equality we are adding square root of 3x plus 4 to both sides of the equation and the effect is that you're going to see uh, uh, the positive 3x plus 4 on this side and, and you're going to eliminate this from the other side okay that's uh, <laughs> that let me explain let me make it clear so now we have this isolated 2x minus 4 is going to be equals and let's write here 3x plus 4 minus 2 okay apply the the power of 2, the, the, the square on both sides, because this is square root, right? If this is square root, you can apply the square on both sides of the equations, of the equation, and it allows us to eliminate this square root, we're going to simplify, and we can rewrite as 2x minus 4, on this side on the other side apply the formula let me show you again the formula the the from section 5.7 this okay 
apply this formula here from section 5.7, the perfect square trinomial. Uh, let's go back. A is square, this is going to be A, and that's going to be B. A is square, 3x plus 4, minus 2AB, minus 2 times 2, 4, times uh, square root of 3x plus 4, plus B is square, 2 is square is 4. That's it. Okay, now uh, we need, we, we uh, will have still a radical, we still have a radical, we have to repeat steps 1 and steps 2 to get rid of this radical as well. So on step uh, 1, well first move everything, isolate the radical, so let's move everything else, everything that's not the radical to the other side. And when I say, again, when I say we are moving to the other side, we are applying additional property of equality. It's, uh, we will add, let me show, 2x minus 4. Now we have this, 3x plus 4. We have to subtract 3x plus 4 from both sides, minus 3x minus 4. And then we get rid of this. And we have to subtract another 4 from both sides and we get rid of this. Okay, this is what I mean by, by getting, by moving to the other side. It's additional property of equality. Equals negative 4 times the square root of 3x plus 4. Okay, and uh, you can pause the video, check if you understand, move, uh, uh, look at the numbers. We can simplify, we can combine like terms. And we're going to have um, 2x minus 3x, negative x, negative 4, minus 4, minus 4, negative 12, equals, equals to what? Negative 4 square root of 3x plus 4. We can change sides, I think. We can change, uh, that's not a problem. And we, we're going to divide both sides by negative 4, right? Divide both sides by negative 4, you're going to find 3x plus 4 on this side. When you divide, divide by negative 4, it's, it, it keeps just 3x plus 4. On, on the, this other side, you're going you're to have um, uh, x over 4 Divide by negative 4, right? You're going to have x over 4 plus negative 12 divided by negative 4, 3. Well, we will work on this solution now. We will apply the square on both sides. So square and square on both sides because it will allow us to simplify this square root of this square. Okay, again. And the result is going to be, okay, now we have more space, we can keep working, 3x plus 4 equals, and apply here the formula, and this now is an addition, is a plus b squared, and this is equals to a squared, a is x, oh, uh, x over 4, so let's just use this, 16, this is a squared, plus 2 times a times b, 2 times a, uh, 2 times x over 4, x over 2, times b, 3 over 2, x, and uh, 3, uh, b, b squared is 3 squared, which is 9, okay? Great, so we're going to have a quadratic equation as a result, let's move all this to the other side, I mean, apply addition property of equality, and uh, we will subtract. 3x minus 4 from both sides, that, right? And we have as a result, well, keep this x squared over 16 plus 3 over 2x minus uh, 3x is going to be negative 3 over 2x, right? 
And uh, 9 minus 4 is positive 5, equals 0. Well, you can find the, you can solve this, you can use uh, uh, AC method, okay? And uh, actually we can multiply all the, both sides of the equation by 16 to simplify this a little bit. So we're gonna have x squared minus times 16. 3 times 16 divided by 2 is 24 uh, plus 16 times 5, uh, 80 equals 0. So you have to find two numbers that multiplying is the AC equals to 80 and the sum of the two numbers equals negative 24. If you think about it, apply, apply the AC method, okay? This is the AC method. And later I'm gonna show you another interesting way of finding this, uh, this kind of answer. But now we will stick with the AC method. You have to find two numbers and uh, think about it. And the numbers will be 4 and negative, negative 4 and negative 20, right? Negative 4 minus 20, negative 20, 20, negative 24, negative 4 times negative 20, 80. Okay, we can represent this as x minus 4 times x minus 20 equals 0. And the solutions will be to make this 0, we, have, we need to have x equals 4. To make this, this um, other factor here 0, we need to make it x equals 20. So the two possible solutions we will have for that uh, uh, the original uh, uh, rational equation, they are x equals 4 or x equals 20. Possible solutions, because first we need to check before we say this, those are solutions. So check to see if this is good into the original equation. Uh, let's bring here, the, again, the original equation, 2x minus 4 minus 3x plus 4 equals negative 2, right? This is the original equation. So let's plug in, oops, let's plug in, this is the original equation. And uh, on, in one side, let's use x equals 4, and then you have square root of 2 times 4, 8, minus 4, minus square root of 3 times 4, 12, plus 4, 16. And let's check if this is equals to negative 2, okay? I don't know yet. Let's check if it is equals to negative 2. And we have 8 minus uh, 4 is uh, 4, square root of 4, what's the square root of 4? 2 minus the square root of 16, 16 is, uh, square root is 4, is, equal, is this equal to negative 2? Yes, yes this is, that's true, that means x equals 4 is a solution, is a possible solution, uh, is, is, we can confirm Yes, it is a solution. X equals 4 is a solution because it produces a true statement when apply, we apply to the original equation. This is the original equation, right? Now let's check the other possible solution. The other possible solution is X equals 20. Let's, uh, let's check it out. 2 times uh, 20. 2 times 20, 40. 40 minus uh, 4, 36, right? And 3 times 20, 60. 60 plus 4, 64. Let's check if this is equal to negative 2. We still don't know. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of uh, 64, 8. Is this equal to, neg to negative 2? What do you think? Have a look. Do the calculations and tell me, uh, is this equals to negative 2? Yes, 6 minus 8 equals negative 2. So this is right. 
this is correct, this is true. We can confirm also that x equals 20 uh, is another solution, another solution uh, for the, the problem, for the equation, because both uh, can be applied into the original equation and produce a true statement. Okay, great. Now, another problem, solve. Uh, square root of 5x equals negative 5. And this is going to be interesting. Let's check it out. Apply on both sides of the equation the square and square. And then we have 5x equals negative 5. The square is 25, right? 25. Divide both sides by 5. Then you have you divide both sides by 5. You have what? x equals 5. And is this the solution? That's it. The end. End of story. Let's move on. No, 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 no. Check. Check. Remember, we're not checking if you did the, the calculations right. You're checking if this solution is going to be good into the original equation. And look what happens. If we try the square root of 5 times 5, and uh, we ask, is this equal to negative 5? The square root of 5 times 5 is square root of 25 is 5. And is 5 equals to negative 5? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. That means this is not a solution. This equation will have no solution. Really important to check, okay? This equation has no solution. All right, now let's move to the next objective, number two. Use the Pythagorean theorem to model problems. And uh, I think I mentioned before, Pythagorean theorem is a formula. And uh, don't get scared about the name. The name is because of the, the guy that uh, created this uh, formula, P Pythagoras. is an old um, uh, mathematician from uh, thousands of years ago, I think from Greece. And uh, don't get scared about the name. It's, it's a, a, a very simple but very important formula and allows us to solve several problems. Okay? If A and B are lengths of the legs of a right triangle and C is the length of the hypotenuse, then A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's the formula, very simple, okay? And the hypotenuse is C, the legs are A and B, and you need to have a right triangle. We have, uh, the, the, that means a triangle that has one of the angles 90 degrees. The hypotenuse is the longest side, always opposite to the right angle, and the legs are the, the sides that make the right angle. So now let's work on a few examples of applications of Pythagorean theorem. Find the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle when the length of the two legs are 2 inches and 7 inches. So it's just an uh, uh, application of the formula. And if uh, you want to find the length of the hypotenuse, is C. C squared equals, and A is, um, you can say 1 is 2, but 1 of the legs is 2, 2 squared, plus, and the other leg is 7, 7 is squared. And then we're going to have 2 squared is 4, plus 7 squared is 49, this is 52. The answer, the solution for that uh, question is, oops, <laughs> 53, sorry. Thank you, 53. The answer for this is going to be apply the square root, right? Square root of 63 is the, the, the value of the hypotenuse, the, the length of the hypotenuse, and we can also add the units, square root of 53 inches. 
Another example, find the length of the leg of a right triangle, give the exact length and a two decimal approximation. Let A equals two, matter, uh, two meters, sorry, and uh, C equals nine meters. So C, nine meters, that means nine squared equals to what? A equals two meters, two squared plus, and we don't know B, we want to find B, B squared. And um, you can move this, apply uh, addition property of equality. So you're going to subtract 2 squared is 4, right? Subtract 4 on both sides of the equation. And that means, and you can switch sides. That's not a problem. It doesn't change anything. You can switch sides. 9 squared is 81. 81 minus 4 is uh, 77, right? And then uh, we can apply the square root on both sides and b equals the square root of 77. And this is uh, inches, right? This is the exact, when we talk about exact length, that means this is the exact length, length. the square root of 77. Because you go on the calculator, you're going to find the result if you want. But the square root of 77 is the precise answer, the exact answer. If you want an approximation, go to the calculator, type 77 square root, and then you're going to find something like that. 8.77 and then a bunch of numbers and if you the question is asking two decimal approximation 8.77 is uh, enough is good okay those are the answers this is the exact answer and this is the uh, the two, two decimal approximation Another example, and now we have a word problem. Uh, let's say um, the surveyor must determine the distance across a lake at, a, uh, at points P and Q. And then this is the lake, you can see point P all uh, the other way across the lake, and Q is here uh, on this side. Well, if the length of uh, PQ is 320 feet, and the length of QR is 240 feet. What is the distance across the lake? Approximate the distance to the nearest Whole Foods. And now we are, uh, after we do a, a, a drawing and understand the, the question, we can see this is a, a right triangle and we can apply Pythagorean theorem, right? The hypotenuse is C, and we can uh, look at the triangle, at the drawing, and we can see the hypotenuse is equal to 320 feet. And the legs are, we can call this one A, 240 feet, and the other leg is unknown. We need to know B, correct? So I find the formula on A squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Uh, we know a, we have the value for a, 240 squared plus b squared equals 320 squared. And uh, you're going to need your calculator because those numbers are going to be <laughs> a large numbers, 57,000. 600 plus b squared equals 102 400 100, 2400 then you can find b squared you're going to apply addition property of equality moving this to the other side of the equation and becomes a negative right minus 57,600, right? Becomes a negative on the other side. And uh, as a result, you have B squared equals 44,800.
Now apply the square roots on both sides. Then the answer. Well, factor out uh, uh, 44,800. You're going to find something like that. 80 is square times, oops, if you factor it out, you're going to find 80 is square times 7. That means the answer is 80 is square root of 7. This is the exact value, the exact answer. If, uh, but the question is not asking about the exact answer. Look at the question. Approximate, approximate the distance to the nearest whole foods. So let's find, and uh, yes, use your calculator. Type in your calculator 80 times 7 squared, and you're going to find 212 point something. But the question just ask uh, the whole foods. So the answer is 212 feet. Okay, the distance across the lake is about 212 feet. That's the right answer. And it ends 7.6. The section 7.6 is over. <laughs> Let's go back to the uh, the puzzle, the, the question of today. And uh, this is Jason, and he will paint this this wall. And I think we can apply the knowledge we just uh, <laughs> we just learned about uh, about uh, the, the Pythagorean theorem. What do you think? We can apply the formula, and the, you can write the formula: c square equals a square plus b square, right? And uh, pay attention. He needs to know the area. The area. What's the area? The area is. It's, it's, it's going to be a square, right? So the area is the sides, the side of the square, the base, let's say the base times the, the height. And they are the same, they, they measure the same. It's both are x, that means the area equals x squared. We need to find x squared. The diagonal is the hypotenuse, that means. 20 c squared, 20 squared, c equals 20, and a is equals to x, and b is also equals to x. You're going to find 200 is 400, 20 squared is 400, equals x squared plus x squared, 2x squared. Divide both sides by, by 2, x squared equals 200. That means the area is going to be 200 square feet. This is the area. X squared is the area and X squared equals 200 square feet. Thank you. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for joining uh, uh, section 7.6 today and I hope to see you back on the next section of our course.